May all your something be forgot and all lang syne. May all your puppets be forgot and all the lang time. I think it goes I like mean, that, right? It's something like Happy New Year, Stephen. <laughs> Happy New Year. Do you, know, do you know the worst thing is is uh, Dick Clark's New Year's Rocketing Eve with Ryan Seacrest, and they now have. Why don't they um, call it Ryan Seacrest at this point? Well, because I get it's, the tradition, but well, no, it's still owned by the Dick Clark Productions. I know, but it's a little. I'm sure people are like, "Wait, Dick Clark? What? Who's that? Who? Who's Dick Clark? Exactly. American Bandstand. What's American Bandstand? Where did American Bandstand start? Do you know, Stephen? Uh, no, nope. Philadelphia. Oh, interesting. Yeah, my mom used to go stand outside. She wanted to be one of those sock hoppers that would dance in the, <laughs> you know, to get picked in to be uh, one of those dancers. You're like, that's right. Look at today. We've got Chubby Checker doing the twist. Whoa! Come on, baby, let's do the twist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you could be one of the white people in the background. <laughs> Awkwardly I'm not dancing. Sure. I'm not sure that <laughs> there were. No yeah. <laughs> exactly. That we had to get to, to Soul Train. Yep. Now, if you go back and you watch the Don Cornelius, you watch the old Soul Train stuff. Holy shit is the old Soul Train stuff so good. I mean, the dancing is kind of interesting. But then you go to like the 80s MTV and you start watching other white people dancing in 80s wear. And, and, and like, then 90s oh. and they're all just drunk white people like that on spring break dancing. Well, that's late 90s. Early 90s yeah. is let's wear oversized clothes Rave. with all the colors. Raves and shit. Yeah. It wasn't raves. It wasn't raves. It was it was TLC. It was like salt and pepper. Mm. It was like wearing all of the multicolor things and got, you know, wearing the big hats and the glasses. And then by the mid 90s then you start to get into like the steven jenkinses of the world <laughs> did you, you watch know. by the way any of the other live broadcasts from new year's eve like what what was considered live uh, like the cnn broadcast no, or well, my, the one with friend, ryan seacrest who was it the the girl from youtube did well, it with him liza koshi i wanted to bring that up she is so bad dude she's she is so, so over horrible. the top Okay, guys, you gonna kiss right now? Oh my god, it's like New I, Year's. I'm sure she's she's catering to the young audience, but she's so over the top. It's just, I said it's that annoying. last year. I said it last year. I'm too. shocked I'm that like, they brought her back. To be honest, I, when I saw that, I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Because then they did one where she's like on the ground, uh, like she's on the ground and her leg is behind her, and she's like, "This is what's coming up next." And it's like, really, you like it produced just seems this so out? forced? That's that's it the is, thing. Yeah, it's all forced, and then it's just like. So they come back from commercial and these two people are kissing and she's like trying to interview them fakely. It's like, uh, and so you, you know that the, this is the producer. Okay. Liza, um, right before the, uh, the, when, when they come back from break, tell these people right now that they're going to kiss and you're going to make pretend you're interviewing them. Why am I putting my finger to my ear, Steven, as if I'm, <laughs> anybody knows what the hell I'm doing, uh. putting my, to the, talking to the producer. Okay. Okay, here she is. She's like, okay, guys, so when we come back from break, you're going to be kissing. And I'm going to make pretend I'm interviewing. Just ignore me and keep kissing. It's going to be really good for middle America. It was. I will say it does. It has to be tough to be one of the hosts during New Year's Eve because it's probably so insanely loud in Times Square while you're trying to hear the producers. You're trying to interview people like the the CNN broadcast is the complete opposite with Andy Cohen and uh, Anderson Cooper. I mean, it was so unscripted. It was almost bad. (laughs) Well, you kind of you need a nice, happy medium. It used to be Kathy Griffin with with him but i you know my friend we were at her house we were going to put on cnn but she actually doesn't get cnn so really like one of those things now she doesn't get cnn she she doesn't get tv or something like that no she has she has verizon but she chose not to get any of the sports or any of the news or anything i have like the basic verizon package and i have like cnn and everything it she didn't include it it's not included i i need to call the the company you know call call verizon and be like look i i don't even watch tv anymore so i think i'm going to cut the cord uh like i did a few years ago and then i brought it back uh i got the triple play package from verizon so i have phone internet and cable phone. you have Dude, a phone I number have phone because it was included in the triple play Dude, i what's your honestly phone number? don't even know my phone number because what's your we, phone number steven i don't know it pops up on the tv every once in a while when someone tries to call but I've, i don't even know the number <laughs> <laughs> i don't have a landline hooked up at all i don't have a phone he doesn't so, know his number. I, I, it's just because it was part of the triple play package and it was cheaper than getting just internet and cable, which yeah. is weird. Um, but now they have an internet only package with the one gigabit uh, up and down. So I think I'm going to cut everything and just go strictly internet. Huh. We never watched uh, cable. Yeah, I think about I got to think about that one. Anyway, um, how was your new year? 
It was good. Spend it with the family. Uh, all the little ones. We have our New Year celebration at about eight o'clock, and then they all go to bed, and then and then the real celebration happens at around you know eleven fifty nine <laughs> for whoever's yeah. left up. And then you go to bed. Uh, this year, I actually was in bed watching the countdown, which I I think this might be the first year I've ever done that. I'm usually was your wife up, in but bed I was with so you? tired. Yeah, we both that were out. Oh, it, oh, you weren't having like a midnight pop. <laughs> she was sleeping by midnight. Hey, she's like, you three, didn't kiss me at midnight. I'm like, you were sleeping. <laughs> I did kiss you at midnight. Oh, that was the other girl. I didn't know. I just went to Morimoto. I got the omakase nice. with a couple of friends and then uh, went back and hung out. And then after midnight, walked home like 1205, walked home around the block, went to bed. Yeah. I mean, my uh, my eventful New Year's Eve nights are over at this point in my life. Uh, yeah. all the little ones are usually in bed, in bed by eight, nine o'clock at the latest. So our new year's Eve is always, a uh, um, an early night. <laughs> it's not a new year's rocking Eve, Steven. No, not a new year's rocking Eve. Now, do you set any goals or resolutions for the new year's? I mean, not like, I don't like write it down and I'm like, this is my new year's resolution. I don't do anything like that, but yeah, I mean, I always have general goals each year to hit. I have I have general ideas of things that I want to do. I don't I don't do resolutions. I think well, I'm not like come January first. I'm going to stop doing this or start doing this. It's just I've said that a million happens. times that if you want to do something, you you start and you just do it. You yep. don't need a fictitious, you know, turn of a calendar. It's just a continuation. I did it one time though. I will say I cut smoking cold turkey on New Year's Day. This is going back I don't know eight nine years ago at this point. Uh, and that was my New Year's resolution was to just cut cold turkey. I still had all New Year's Eve to chain smoke. <laughs> and then I cut it off the next day and wanted to kill myself. I have. Um, did you know we have a new and sponsor? To this day, I have not touched a cigarette. Well, we have a new sponsor and, and you're the spokesperson for it. Camel Crush. Yes. <laughs> hey. Marlboro. Camel Crush. This uh, this segment is brought to you by smoking. Smoking is the leading cause of cancer amongst kids between the ages of 18 and 35. Uh, but if you want that smooth, smooth menthol taste, just press this little nodule right here, which definitely has to be good for you. You know what's crazy? It's like I've actually never smoked a cigarette. I've, good for I've you. never smoked a cigarette. Good. I used to throw my dad's cigarettes out because I didn't like that he was a smoker back then. Oh, I didn't know and your dad I, ever smoked. Oh, back in the day, he smoked. He smoked huh. all the way up until my mom died. Oh, wow. Yeah, he kept smoking. Like, Did, he, did your know. mom smoke as well or no? My mom smoked up until the day she found out she was pregnant with my brother. Okay, gotcha. And then that was it. I mean, that was the seven. It was 1978. So sure, if you weren't everyone smoking, smoked, yeah. You know, and I was thinking about this the other day. I was watching Breaking Bad again because it's just really good, and I've never rewatched it. Um, and uh, the the mother, the whatever, Skylar was smoking, and she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I sat there. I'm like, and? I'm like... Our par every baby boomer's parent smoked nonstop and drank during pregnancy. And look how they turned out. I know. Seriously. I think they turned out okay. There, there's so They're many restrictions, too, when it comes to uh, being a pregnant woman of what you can't eat or drink or, or any of that. And it's like, does it really matter? I know it's for the, you know, the betterment of the child. I mean, I, I think the smoking in the 70s and 60s and 50s and 40s and was the enough. Crap and the drinking. And all the processed food and everything, They didn't too. have processed foods. I'm That's the difference. I'm like thinking 70s, 80s, you know. 80s. Yeah. It didn't happen until the 80s. Like, the processed food became a major issue. The 40s, 50s, and 60s was still real food. And then, you know, not that this is a food uh, podcast. Well, this is a photography podcast. We're going to get to the photography stuff in just a minute because we've got things to talk about. Like Panasonic has the S5. We'll talk about that. Sony made a car. Nikon has a development announcement. Talk about a YouTuber who's talking about kind of burnout and wanting to get away from it. We'll talk about that. Uh, and and yeah, I just want to lead into a few things that I do. I, I don't really set goals, but one of the things I want to do, I started this at the end of the year or before the end of the year was I haven't been happy with my lunches and lunches are super important to me. <laughs> I was doing those trifecta meals for a while and I started you to and hate your them. food, man. <laughs> yeah, but I started to hate them. And the reason I started to hate them is because it just wasn't enough calories and it was too salty. It just, I didn't like it felt like too much uh, sodium. Here we go. 20 minute conversation about your food. <laughs> so I am testing what, how I can prep my meals for the week Bang and them all out Sunday night or something. Yeah. Well, and it's not that hard. I bake the chicken paprika uh garlic a little salt 
maybe a little pe- well pepper and a little bit of salt and then put some olive oil on it and then I bake that up and then I get a whole breast of chicken that I can heat up here and I can make a whole tray of Brussels sprouts carrots and broccoli ste- uh, in the in the oven roasted and that becomes my side and so I can do that four or five days in a week so I just have to go to Whole Foods now to buy my chicken and just prep it. It's not really that hard. I can totally do it. Well, when I was coming to work full time, you know, Monday through Friday, I would always pack my lunch. And that was my Sunday ritual was basically go to wherever, buy some food for the week and then prep it all, have it all ready to rock. So when I leave the house, I can just quickly grab it from the fridge and I'm good to go. Like I would, you know, make a, a dozen hard boiled eggs and get everything prepped for the week. And and that was great. I saved so much money from not going to like, you know, Wawa and eating like shit every day. Yeah. Well, I just have to figure out the do I put them in Ziploc bags, freezer bags, containers I, like uh, little Rubbermaid plastic containers, stuff like that? Yeah, but you can't get all the air out of those. So there's no, more no, the air. new ones. They actually have a little thing on the top that you can pop open and suck the air out. Can you send me a link to whatever those things are called? And maybe I'll take a look into yeah, it. Just basic Tupperware, you know? No, I want you to send me a link. I want to have a Tupperware party. <laughs> and you can, uh, you know, you can wash them. You can reuse them all the time. You're not wasting plastic bags and destroying the world. Well, that's why do you think I just said that to you? I don't know. My, my, my um, Ziploc bags are not destroying the world, Stephen. Well, it's like my Keurig, for example. I hate to use the plastic ready to go Keurig uh, little containers because you can't recycle them. You know, they're getting thrown into the dump. They're not breaking down or anything. Now I just use the reusable like stainless steel ones and I put my own coffee grinds in there and make my own coffee every day. It's just something a little better, you know, helping the world one one step at a time. Good for you, Stephen. Do you know what I signed <laughs> up for? Saving the world, man. <laughs> yeah. You know what I signed up for? What? A painting class. Oh, well, they have a class that starts tonight, but it was full. Full is considered nine people because I called to see if I could squeeze in. But they're like, we have a wait list and it doesn't start again till like February. Um, unfortunately, So what are you painting? Like people, things, I don't, I don't know, everything, hopefully naked men. It's I mean, right women. Up your alley. <laughs> no, I, I think that I just want to I just want to get a fundamental basic understanding of and I just want I just want to put paintbrush to canvas and see what happens because well, Jared, I, you, you I already Monet. see pictures in your mind right i do see pictures so in my mind now you just need to paint them i i just need to do it so <laughs> i want to try something different like that to see if it's if i can put the music on and just paint like monet or something i want to see if i can do it mm-hmm. or i could just use ai and tell it to spit out some monet exactly. stuff exactly <laughs> and, and and speaking of monet i will be going to paris it's already booked for march 28th into the 29th to get to paris nice and my friend is running the Paris Marathon, so a bunch of us said, okay, let's get an Airbnb and go. So we did all that. How long and, are you staying uh, for? Uh, till April 7th. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, and which means uh, that we'll prep the the April Fool's Fix, which falls on a Saturday oh, this year. I hate doing that every year. It's so much work. <laughs> yeah. Because well, we'll we're, we're literally it. creating cameras that don't exist or lenses or whatever it may be. I don't, don't know what this them, year's. Steven. Don't tell them, Don't tell them. I don't know what this year's going to be. Oh, we got to do this year's. Uh, we got to uh, do it soon. April, yeah. April Fool's Fix. Well, not really soon, but. Well, yeah, I always I need guess. at least two or three days making graphics and, and whatever fake shit that I'm making for the fix. Yeah. But I, I'm there's a Henry Cartier Bresson. Henri Collier Brosson oh, uh, oh. Museum that I reached out to oui, oui. that I'd, I'd like to get a tour. And then I was looking up stuff for the Louvre and it was kind of funny. Let me see if I have where I have. Uh, How long ago? What was it? Four years ago when you went to uh, Paris? I went to the Louvre a while ago. Yeah. At the Louvre, I was looking for tours and they have official tours and VIP guests. It says the Musée de Louvre offers a personalized welcome and priority access to prestigious guests. I'm like, <laughs> that's me. Do you know who I am? I'm like, that's me. I'm a prestigious guest. It's like, if you wish to organize a tour for a high profile personality, send us an email. That's me. Definitely not I'm you. a high profile personality. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I fit the epitome of that. Maybe this time I won't get, you know what? Someone said to me, someone from Paris was like, yeah, they probably just charge you more. They probably just charge you more to say that you're a high profile um, and and have you come in. That's true. I should probably schedule a meetup at some point and do a meetup in Paris and just say hi to people. Just like a hangout. That's it. (laughs) Kind of like what we we did in uh, Germany, right? We did it in Germany. I've done it in London. I've done it in 
Uh, I've done it all over the world, to be honest with you. And it's just... I will say, though, I'm not a fan of, like, photo walks. I don't mind the meetup, but, like, photo walks, you just... We don't do it. It's everyone trying to get the same shot, and you just look ridiculous, and usually you don't don't end up getting anything decent. Yeah. I don't do photo walks. Now, now, speaking of photo walks, there was a big, big photo walk in Japan a couple months ago uh, brought to you by Panasonic. Panasonic, who just announced the S5 II and S5 VIII. I'm calling it the S5 VIII, by the way. And I know that people are like, that's not how Roman numerals work because it's S5 IIX. Now, so is it II space X or IIX? No. Right the press release is I, I, capital I, capital I, capital X huh. all together. Interesting. The, the press, dude, the press release from Panasonic was such garbage. It wasn't even, there were so many mistakes, grammatical errors, spelling errors, wrong words used all together and not checked. How do you send that stuff out? Not che- I get some minor things like a, 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 a space somewhere, but to, it looked like whoever wrote that English was definitely not their first language. I, it just, they just, no, I just think they used autocorrect and didn't check to, to they didn't send it to someone to reread. Wow. That, now, that would be pretty bad. So what's interesting about this Panasonic uh, photo walk that was a photo walk for influencers is that they brought, and from what I'm told, roughly 87 influencers, a lot of YouTubers were invited to Japan for like four days to test out the S5 II. And this is months ago. I can't imagine the price of that. Well, What they spent to bring all those influencers for four days to Japan. Yeah, and I know the only people that I know, well, not only people I know, but I know Ted Forbes went. I know that uh, Tony and Chelsea were invited but didn't go. I know that DP Review TV went. Other than that, in the YouTube sphere from the United States of known people, I don't know who else actually went. Did Manny get invited? Manny didn't get invited, Hmm. which is so weird. I didn't get invited, which is beyond weird. And we've covered Panasonic before. We've done lens reviews. We've done, we did the S1, which I thought we kind of praised. We did. We liked the S1. We did. Except for, we said that the The focus was good. was a little, Which is exactly why they should have invited us to Japan. Because we said that the S1 was very good, except for it fell short on the focus. I do get it. You know, inviting someone like you who, uh, who likes to rant a lot and you're very vocal and controversial a little bit. Uh, I do get that, like, because you either 100% praise something or 100% shit on it. So it's rolling the dice if they're, they're inviting you. I do get that part. Nikon but, brought us the Z9, okay? Exactly. If, if Nikon brings us the Z9 after the shit that I took on, on the Z system for a while, on the, you know, the certain thing. But, yeah, I was a little pissed off to find out that 87 of these people were going to Japan because I found out before because I have my ways of knowing what's going on and who's going. So I reached out to Panasonic Is discreetly. Is FOMO or are you just annoyed that you didn't get invited? Well, one, I've never been to Japan and I wanted to go to Japan. Yeah. Two, I wouldn't Free have trip. taken you. I wouldn't have taken. I wouldn't have taken you Damn. this time. But no, I think it would have been better that I stayed home. We too. had a lot of work we were doing. It was in March, March, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, it was August, not March. September. It was. Uh, I think it was September. Yeah, it was. It was later in the year. There was like a, a time period. That was right when we were doing all the new Canon cameras. Uh, Sony had something new come out too. There was a bunch of stuff that that month. But the whole week that it was happening, I knew I didn't really have much to do here. Yeah. And so it would have been perfectly fine for me to end up going. And I would have vlogged. I would have done my own, my own thing like I was doing when I went to... Actually, was it November? And see, the, the, the thing is, I would be concerned if you couldn't bring the camera back. But most people, I think everyone could take the camera with them home because it was a full working production model of the S5 II. I heard so some things... I could then do all the pickups that I need, the beauty shots, stuff like that here, you could have vlogged or, or took pictures, did whatever at Japan, in Japan, and then I could have kind of rounded it out here, which which would have worked for sure. But if you couldn't bring it home, that would have been an issue. Well, yeah. I mean, my whole thing is like, I looked at the list of people that put out videos and I'm like, really? Like, these are your people? And, and I think... In my opinion, the reason they did that is because these are people that have never been invited to trips like this. They've never been invited anywhere. They're, they're so grooming when you start, them. <laughs> well, when you start to invite someone and it's their first trip or it's a first trip in a long time, they're gonna praise they them. are going to be like, they're going to overlook a lot of the camera just to praise. Like the praising of the the dual, the the what do they call Phase it? Phase detect. The, 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 the praising going on, the fact that they've done, finally, they've done it. And I'm like, great, five, six, seven years after everybody else. Like, you don't get kudos for catching up that late behind. And from what I, I've seen, it's still not up to par with the other brands either. 
And I think this is a last ditch effort. I think because we don't see an S2, right? They didn't do the S1 and the S1H. They didn't. Re- I think this is their this is their Hail Mary. This is their let's try and make I an said ace. Hail Mary. Oh, did, did you really? read my photo news fix? No, I said it in no. photo news fix. <laughs> no, I just I think it's uh, they're trying to replicate what Sony did with the a7 III. Five years ago. Five years ago. Yeah, exactly. And I think if they could pull that off, $2,000 camera that has great fate detect AF and dual card slots, all the bells and whistles. Hey, I mean, they might have something going for them, but they're still very limited with the lens lens selection and, and everything else with that L mount. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can use all the Sigmas, but there's some native Panasonic. Speaking of, you mentioned I keep Hail forgetting Mary. about Sigma. Yeah, you're right. You mentioned Hail Mary. There, uh, here's a book recommendation for everybody. Project Hail Mary. We'll really love that book. So if you want to listen to it on Audible, I highly recommend it. This section is not brought to you by Audible, because if it was, I would have more credits to download books. <laughs> Jeff, advertising guy. Jeff, get on Audible. We should put them here. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, no, I'm a little salty I wasn't invited when I found out who was going. And I do think that a lot of it is they they are worried about what I will say. But, you know, to, to, to not even get invited, to not even get a press release, I had to email them a day before the announcement that we knew was coming and be like, hey, is there anything new coming? Oh, sign this NDA. We'll give you the press release. I'm like, whoop-dee-doo, while everybody else has the camera. And not that not that I want to see, this plays into that Maddie Hapoya thing that we're going to talk about, which I guess we could bring up right now. For those who don't know, Maddie Hapoya is part of the quote-unquote dope squad. He is a tag-along you know, to Peter McKinnon. He was one of the people who started around the time that Peter did. And because Peter did, and he was friends with him, Peter, um, you know, blew up Maddie who tagged along with Peter for a while, got a lot of following from it. And to his credit was able to sustain and build his own following off of that. So kudos to him. Mm -hmm. And he has a family and he travels and he put out a video talking about stopping making YouTube videos basically into 2023 because he lost the, 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 there's that chase like he's making good money but he has his family wants to spend time there he, he and wants lost to the travel. drive he's burning out so i i get it i don't know that it, it's the burnout or the drive i think it's more the well yes i guess there's some burnout and drive but i it's, think it's definitely it's, that a lot of it is do you want to chase do you want to chase what everybody else is chasing which is constant battle for numbers well and it's making videos just to make videos which is what it is, which we've been doing for a while. Oh, yeah. We've been making videos. I mean, the, my whole thing with bringing that up right now is, do I want to chase these low-level YouTubers in being the person that reviews the Panasonic S5 II? Like, it, it, even in the Canon, Nikon, Sony world, do I want to chase and worry what, oh, DP Review TV is going to make this, and then I got to do this? Like, do I worry about that instead of just making awesome fucking content that I want to make? You know, it's a double-edged sword. The hard part, and I say this every time, is it's all revolved around gear. You know, we try to put out other types of content. And it just flops unless you have some crazy clickbaity title or if it's surrounded by brand new gear. I well, mean, we've seen we, it time and time again. We found a loophole, a, a hole in the matrix, which is the, the scripted videos. Correct. Making a scripted video based around a title that we come up with, like Goodbye Photography, was a great title. And that video has 100, almost 150,000 views. Granted, and, and it also looks like, you know, you're leaving the photography world with the look on your face and the thumbnail and the title. And it's a five minute video. It kind of checks all the boxes of like, this is what the algorithm wants. Something super what, clicky, short, great title and thumbnail. Boom. And that's what you want to deliver. I mean, but the thing is, when you look at our videos, it's not like people are clicking on and then disappearing because, you know, the video we put up the other day, which was a sponsored video by uh, SanDisk, it shot out of the canon really well. And I thought that and it started to die within 75, 80 minutes. It, it see, it was a, it was above the fray early and then it just started to fall off. And now it's below the fray. It does, Stephen, that you, you thought it would have 60, 70,000 views. I told you it was going to have 30 to 40,000 views. And yeah. that was it. And, and I think but I don't think it was because of the sponsored video, because average watch time is over 50 percent. Hmm. What what counts as a view on YouTube? Is it 10 seconds? 30 seconds. So, I mean, what if a lot of people clicked on it and then instantly saw sponsored by S- uh, SanDisk and, leave. and left? Yeah, and that's a, that's, that is probably what ends up happening and then tells the algorithm that this isn't worthy of people watching. And, and that's you're not getting it in the recommended it. feeds. And yeah. 
And that's what does it. So, but there's nothing we could do. Um, that was a sponsored video that we took because, and I explained it. I, I th- did you see the comment I commented back to? Like someone's like, "This is clearly a sponsored video." Uh, I was like, "That's what we say." The first like, three did seconds you watch of the video. The first three seconds where it says <laughs> this video is brought to you by Sandisk, and you bring and it up I again ex- like 20 seconds after that. And I bring up the fact that the reason I did a sponsored video is because you actually use it. I encountered this product, one of their products, one of their SSDs. And I instantly bought one of those products for myself. Then I reached out to SanDisk and was like, hey, I'm putting out this free content about the stuff you're doing. If you ever have budget to do a sponsored video, let us know. I cultivated a relationship over a six month period till they did have a budget to do something. And I just kept putting out content about it because I liked it. This is literally how we transfer content to Dan or even myself when we're at the factory. I mean, it's so much faster. It's so much better for our workflow. Is this sponsored too, this part? No, not sponsored. <laughs> no, but we actually use it. That's that's the great thing about videos like that, where we can team up with a company and actually use their product and promote it. Yeah. I do also want to add that I thought that video was very, very refreshing the way we shot it. It was much different than how we normally do it. We went from location to location to kind of showcase that you can literally put it in your pocket and use it wherever you're at whether it's on location at a photo shoot or on the go in your car or even in the studio. That's kind of the point of the video to go from location to location. And I thought it was it was a fun edit to deal with because we were constantly moving and bringing the audience along. Yeah, I think that's what people liked. I saw some comments about that, which is which is good. Well, did anyone comment about the pickups that we did? No. no well, I didn't read all the comments, the, so I have no idea. poor voiceover work that we did? <laughs> well, so can we... Let, let's talk let's about break it down, yeah. blurring stuff. Let's talk about why stuff is blurred. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when you do a sponsored video with a corporation that is a publicly traded company, they have a legal department. I don't agree with it. Um, Me either. My first take was, I don't want to do this. I'm not going to make these changes because... Why, why, why should we like when I, when I say MacBook pro and you tell me to blur the logo of MacBook pro, what is the point? Yep. When you have us blur logos of the gym equipment, why we're not saying anything offensive when you want us to say the exact name of the product. When I literally have it highlighted on the screen, as you're saying an abbreviated version of that. It's, it's asinine what you have to deal with when it comes to corporate. That's why we rarely, I think sponsored video wise last year the only sponsored video we may have done a handful like four maybe one of them a couple of them were for insta 360 Mm -hmm. which is really good we like the stuff and they we do actually use them again all the time yeah and and they have it's nice when you have a company that we like doing these product showcases we don't like that people yell at us one guy called us you know called me a sellout for taking money and was like cool I'm a sellout. Awesome. But, but it's not like we do it all the time. It's very few and far between, you know, that we're doing um, these sponsored- product showcase. Yeah, exactly. And and whatever. It, it, it totally helps the bottom line. Whatever. It's all good like that. But with the, the Matty Hapoya thing, you know, he's always talking about constantly having to make a piece of content here, constantly making a piece of content there. And I feel like I've been in the same boat a long time. I've been doing it longer than these guys. I oh, mean, yeah. I'm 13 years in to doing YouTube. And I mean, I love what I do, but- the downtimes are what get to me. I don't know if I should be traveling more. I don't know. Like I need to, do I, do I break free of my own personal chains that where I don't travel? Cause I'm like, well, I won't be doing anything and just be okay with it. And maybe just go encounter other people and just see what happens. My problem is I'm single. I don't have a family. Yeah. Everybody else got family and kids. So they've got this built in shit to do. And the grass is always greener. So some people are like, you have it made. Cause you have all this time. And then I'm like, I, Kind of a little bit sometimes, but I'm like, but you but also so much have time a family. to do what? You know what right. I mean? Well, that's why I signed up for a painting class. Yeah. I got bowling on Wednesdays. I bowled, I bowled a 598 series yesterday. I only had my first game was a 181. Second game was a 205. Third game was a 212. Not to and brag or anything. No, I could have been better. <laughs> I actually bowled a really good first game. I was clean through eight. Missed a pin in the ninth, unfortunately, for an open, and then finished pretty good for a 181. It's pretty bad to have a pretty clean game, and but basically what I didn't do was stack any strikes. Stacking strikes means multiple strikes in a row, like four, three, four, five in a row starts to really build build mm-hmm. some points. I finished the the third game. I know it's off on a tangent, but the third game, I uh, I think I had seven strikes in the game. Um, I had two opens in a row, which was bad, uh, which isn't good. Oh no, I don't remember what game I had two opens. But I ended up striking five in a row to end the game. So nice. ninth frame, so eighth frame, ninth frame, 10, bonus, bonus, five, five strikes in a row for my 212. 
Now back to the subject at hand. <laughs> oh yes, uh, I, I, I always do, looking for things. To I do. do always try to get you to get out of the studio, especially if me and Dan are busy, which is ninety percent of the time. You know, you you can do whatever you want. You are the boss. You're the entrepreneur. You built this this uh, the ship from the ground up. Um, I, I try to get you out there, and I feel like you you feel like you have to be in the studio like nine to five. No, you have to do, I don't feel like I have to be here. I don't feel like I have to be here. It's that I don't have other things to do. But then why not like, just stay home then? Because I have nothing to do at home. What would I do at home? What would you sit do at the on studio? my phone? <laughs> it's but, the same and, thing as being at the studio. No, it's not. Okay. I've separated church and state. I've separated home. I hate being home. Yeah, like, I don't want to be home because then the cat's there. What am I going to do? Walk around in fucking circles? Well, I mean, I work from home, for example, and it is tough to separate it. But it's it's not bad when my wife is working every day too, so she's not here. I'm here by myself. I pretty much lock my office door to make it seem like I'm at work. Once I step into this office, I'm here. You know, there's nothing that I can do around the house. I try to really separate that. And it's tough. But you have a task you're working on. You're working on the editing right Correct. now. Correct. Yeah. It's not like I'm sitting here just browsing the internet for sure. Yeah. No, I mean, I've been writing scripts and you I have. get tired I, of that. You, you, I, you wrote what? Four or five over well, the break? No, there's, there's just two. Oh. I, I didn't finish the Maybe prediction video. Maybe they were just video. ideas you sent me then. I sent you ideas. Um, I sent you some ideas, but I did finish two scripts. You're editing a video right now. Mm -hmm. I've been by myself since you guys took a break on the 22nd, uh, December. No, after Christmas. Oh, 28th, yeah. 27th. Yep. Yeah. So I've been by myself and it's tough because, oh, and I wanted to bring that up too. How, how was Monday a holiday? This bullshit. New Year's fell on a Saturday. I don't give a shit that it's a federal holiday that you must get Monday off. Why? You had Sunday to recover. Get back to fucking work on Monday, you loser. Wait, was, wasn't was New Year's Day Sunday? Yeah, New Year's Day was Sunday. Sunday, yeah. I get they gave, it. The, but they gave everybody off Monday. Yeah, but you got to understand, people are traveling during the holidays like that. Like, I, I've went, for example, to my sister's. They during, got an extra day is what I'm saying this year. Yeah, but if they're traveling... They're going to be there Sunday and they're going to celebrate New Year's Day with them and then come home. Who that celebrates night or, New Year's Day? Who gives a shit? I'm just saying people are with their families. <laughs> but they're with their families all the other years, too. So if it falls on a Monday, they get Tuesday off and they go home and start work on Wednesday. Uh, sure. <laughs> right, on this, oh, You start on the second. All I know is there's a lot of people that go away for the week. A lot of people that go away from like Christmas to New Year's. So? So New Year's Day is Sunday. They're probably not getting home until Monday is my point. That's why they have schedule off. Schedule your time. It's bullshit. <laughs> Just people that don't want to work. I rarely get off. And, and this I'm is not my... talking about you. Yeah, but you kind of are. I'm not talking about you. You took an extra day anyway. Exactly. My you vacation day that I've no, earned. You took Tuesday on top of Monday. Yes, because I strategically planned out my week to take 10 straight days off. Which Five full business days. It's a yeah, week. I got you. I'm not That's yelling you at it. you, Stephen. I'm talking about the banks and yeah, shit okay, closing. Scrooge. They should have been open. You're Scrooge. <laughs> so anyway, back to back to back to me and not having much to do. It's like I write scripts, I edit stuff, I still do stuff on the YouTube's. I work out in the mornings. I have bowling on Wednesdays. I I got my car, but it's just like, I just don't want to go do shit just to go do and shit. And it's tough because not many people have that type of schedule where they're very flexible during the day. A lot of, at least my friends, for example, like most of them are stuck at the office or stuck at home working until that five, six o'clock time. So it's not like I could just call, you can just call somebody up and be like, hey, what are you doing at 12 o'clock today? Let's hang out. Let's go do something. I mean, I went to the zoo the other day because I tested out a lens. I shot the Mummers Parade with a, a test a lens we're testing out. And so but I that's do that work, stuff. That's work to me. What it you're is, doing but there. It's, I need to fill time. But then the other thing is I can write a million scripts, but if we can't get them filmed and edited, mm -hmm. it just, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter. But on, on that vein of things to do, like I, I don't have Paris until March, but I'm 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 half tempted to just fly to freaking Paris now and spend a couple days by myself seeing if I like it, which brings up I want to set up a mobile photo news fix mm. uh bag. Like a go bag and and what that looks like. And and I think we need to have a trade off between usability and quality. Which we've done it before, Stephen. We've done it in, in hotels before. Do you remember how we did that? 
Yeah, it was very difficult. <laughs> it was very difficult. But that was a you, smaller phone. We had a iPhone like five at the time, or maybe six, I think it was. So we're looking at a four inch screen and we used that little parrot teleprompter. And it was great for traveling because you can literally put it in your pocket and go. Uh, but the issue is you're, you can't see. Like currently at the studio, we have like a, it's like a 30 inch prompter, right? Something like well, that. Down, downstairs is 27, 27. Upstairs is 30. And I think downstairs you're about eight feet away, give or take, from the prompter. And even then, you still kind of have trouble reading it. 130. No, I don't have trouble downstairs. It's 138 point text. That's what I'm saying. On a 27 inch monitor, it's huge. We're also so using a 28 really to tough, 70. Even getting something like a, uh, I don't know, an iPad that's 12 inches, whatever the size they are, 11 inches. Uh, I think that will still be tough for you because you got to remember, you got to still make the text giant for you yourself to read. So if it's still small text, you're still going to struggle reading that unless you're super close. But you can't be that close because the prompter, you can't have a super wide angle lens on a teleprompter because then you're going to start seeing vignetting and the actual prompter itself. So what my ideal thing would be if if and I know this is, is kind of weird but it would be the one that uses the iPad, the iPad Pro, mm-hmm. and the mirror that it has in well, oh, I'm an idiot. Dude, I'm an idiot. What? I'm like, if it should have a folding mirror, but I'm like, but if it unfold like if you fold it back up and open it back up, then how's the camera gonna shoot through with that seam in the middle, you dumbass? Yeah, you can't have a folding, yeah. What a dumbass. What an idiot. I'm an idiot. Now you could probably Steven. there might be a collapsible one in general that doesn't fold the actual mirror, but it we collapses have, down to like a book almost. Well, prompter people sent us one, but I, I think we need it to get even smaller. Yeah, than but that. that one I don't think is very portable. It doesn't they, like they collapse down. They sent me down. the portable one. They sent me one oh, that folds did. over. Okay. Yeah, we've never set it up. It's still sitting here somewhere. Well, we can mess with it and see if it works. Um, again, the hard part for you is even if it's a smaller screen, you still need big text. Unless yeah. you're literally a couple feet away, but then the wide angle lens is the issue. So, well, that and I need to be able to control the text, start and stop it. Which, which I know with the, the parrot teleprompter we used to have, it actually had a Bluetooth remote that we would use. So you could do it that way. Uh, I'm sure there's other options out there. It's just, it's been a long time since we've done a mobile teleprompter. Uh, ideally, it would be have the camera and set up, have a laptop that has the ability to, you know, have the same software that we use and have the foot pedal with me. Well, but I'd probably be sitting somewhere. I'd probably be sitting. But I was thinking like, I was if, gonna say, a tripod, I, if you're in the hotel room, you're probably sitting, right? I don't know that I want to do a hotel room. I'm going to maybe be doing it in the Entre Triomphe or in front of the Eiffel Tower out in public. Yeah, but if you're, you're like, doing it during the daytime. Fuck you, French. Fuck you. <laughs> that's going to be very hard for you to see the screen, I bet. That's true. You know, unless you have like a thousand nit super bright ninja or something. Dude, I just got the idea. What? Not Google Glass, but when Apple comes out with these lenses that have You're words a glass like a hole? teleprompter. Well, no, but imagine if there were words projected out in front of me from the teleprompter, from glasses that acted as a teleprompter, because those things are possible. So imagine you have the horn rim glasses and it's got in there this, it shows you this is a this is actually going to be a thing. I mean, why can't Imagine, it just be like Minority Report, where you have these translucent screens in front of you that you're you're controlling? <laughs> what I'm saying is, I I guarantee you. I mean, if you have a heads up display in a car, we know that that's a thing. Yeah, we know that Apple's working on glasses of some kind, and other companies are too. And also, one day we'll get to contacts that have screens in them that you basically are computer screens. Obviously, that's a long way away. They'll probably be powered by your body electricity, by the way. They'll probably conduct through your eyeball electric stimuli and power it. But just imagine if I had glasses and in the glasses in projected in front of me are the words. So that would be amazing. Oh, yeah. That would be unbelievable to have projection glasses like that. I agree. Um, that would be perfect. But I still happen. think that's uh, many years down the road. It is many until years down Until that becomes the, the norm or at least uh, <laughs> until it's an affordable price. We're gonna have to. Um, we're gonna have to come up with one of those. I don't think it'll be hard. Of those I mean, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, again, the only it, it's just it's tough because unfortunately you are pretty blind when it comes to uh, reading something from farther away. And well, that you, and I have to you do have the, setup. the eye issue, the condition. What's it called? Nystagmus. Yeah, and and stigmatism, all of it. So yeah, your eyes shake and and everything becomes blurry, and it's tough. It's it is tough. I mean, we barely get by with. I mean, it's tough for us even to do scripted videos from ten feet away. Well, yeah, when my eyes go nuts and my head turns and sometimes my eyes just start shaking A, a five-minute video might take 40 minutes to record because of that. 
just uncontrollable I mean, nonstop shake. takes. Yeah, it's just because you can't see it. But isn't it amazing when it actually settles down and you're like, holy shit. Uh, and I'm like, holy fuck, I can just read. Well, the issue, too, with you when you're doing the scripted videos is that's when I actually have the shotgun boom mic right above you. And your head slowly turns because you go to your dominant eye, I guess, to read it. Uh, I do. So that's the hard part is is your audio slowly starts to shift and you sound a little different like that. <laughs> yeah. So I have to kind of almost move the microphone sometimes midway through. Well, I mean, this all does come back to the same thing that Maddie Apoya is talking about. Like, I want to, you know, if I travel and go somewhere, I still want to work because that's what I've got. And so to do a mobile photo news fix, there's no reason why I can't write a fix from the road. There isn't a reason why Stephen and I can't do raw talk from the road. Oh, you know, raw me, talk would be anywhere. simple, yeah. You know, it's just audio and it's just as long as you have an internet connection that's fast enough, then it's fine. And audio, or it's small wave files. I mean, we're looking at maybe two or three gigs for a full raw talk wave file for each of us. So that's fine. That's that's not hard to send over the internet. The hard part is if you're trying to do a photo news fix that's, say, 30 minutes long uh, of actual record time, it might be like a 50 gig file unless we really well, it's dumb never it down. 30 minutes. It's never 30. It's only it's usually 12 to 14, depending on how often I mess up. Well, I I'm predicting that it might be uh-huh. longer because of, you know, the fact that you're reading on a much smaller teleprompter, you might need more takes, stuff like that. So when I was in Venice, remember I did the intro and then Dan did this on your the, the episode. Phone, yeah. Yep. I did the intro, you know, no, I, I filmed it. Did I do it with my phone? Pretty sure. Cause it, it may have done it, it with my like phone. A phone. <laughs> but the thing is, I could not get it up to Dropbox. I need to turn off that feature on my phone because I turn off my feature for Dropbox on the phone where it's where always it, it on. Syncs. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want it to sync anything. I just don't want it. Well, I did the same. It's also a little confusing because I think you have your business and your private account synced to the same Dropbox, if I recall. I don't and remember how And I have how two separate up. accounts where it's my individual account and then the business Ronos photo account. So I could still upload separately to my private account if I wanted to from my phone. But I, it gets a little wonky when you start dealing with different types of accounts and you have your phone syncing to that. I remember I actually did do it with a real camera. It was about 118. Really? Yeah, it was about 118 megabytes. And I transferred Oh, you probably it, had like a super high shutter speed because it didn't. It looked like a phone to me, but I could see why. whatever it was. Or maybe it was. I don't remember at this point. I have to take a look. But I tried to upload through Dropbox. It wasn't going to happen because we didn't have a great Internet connection. But I used um, Google, what, what's Go- Google Drive. Mm. I went on my phone and I used uh, the cellular data, and which I have, and it uploaded in a matter of minute, you know, in a couple, of, in like a minute f- using cellular from Venice to uh, Google Drive, which means maybe I need to pay for Google Drive on the road. And that might be a better way if I don't have a a good internet connection that I can use with my computer. I think a popular travel spot location like Paris, I'm sure they'll have decent internet in those hotels. It's only an issue when it's not staying in hotels. I'll be in Airbnbs or Airbnb or Airbnb. I'm sure it's decent internet. Actually, it's probably better in Airbnbs. Um, The only issue in Paris the last time I had really good internet. Yeah, exactly. The only issue would be if you're in like the Midwest in the middle of nowhere at the Grand Canyon or something like that. Like that's where it's you're going to have a serious issue trying to upload content. Yeah. You might have to drive so, two, three hours, you know, away to get a decent speed. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. So I'll figure, I got to figure some stuff out. You know, it's life stuff. I, I'm, I don't like traveling on my own because I just end up sitting there doing nothing, but I need to just start planning things like anywhere there's a, uh, 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 uh what's his name? The Frank Lloyd Wright house. I'd like to go to every one of those. Those are really cool. Museums like that. Set up tours of different photo places and different art museums. They're actually really good, but I got to get a docent everywhere. Uh, A tour guide would be very helpful. And then just go to dinners in different places and just randomly go to coffee shops and maybe work from there. Live life. But it's not really. But then I got to figure out what to do with my life. (laughs) So anyway, CES has been going on. We don't go to CES anymore. We used to. Every year. we used to, but there's no reason to go. Um, Sony announced a car in partnership with Hyundai or Hyundai, huh. whichever way it goes. It has like 45 cameras and sensors on it. it, it basically, no, this is going to be an actual car. They're saying in 2026. Oh, wow. It's they're not actually, like a concept car or something like that. It, right. No, it was a concept for years, but I guess they partnered up with Hyundai, 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 whichever one to turn it into a reality. Interesting. So, so what uh, is what is Sony powering in the car? Like the sensors or cameras well, or what? Sony makes sensors, uh, uh, you know, regular sensors. They make cameras. 
right? And the sensors that go in the cameras, they make the infotainment systems that go into the cars, the screens, the games. So, all so of more of the stuff. electrical components versus like the actual car. Well, that's why right? they teamed up with, well, they probably have a battery division somewhere that makes batteries. Yeah. So yeah, they team up with, just think about it. My, my Tesla only has a certain amount of moving parts, right? Yeah, there's yeah. no engine anymore. There's mm-hmm. no oil. There's none of that. You have tires, you have battery, and you have propulsion. But your your, the, your Porsche and Lamborghini still have engines, right? They do. They still do. <laughs> yeah, they still do. The Porsche, Lamborghini, <laughs> Bentley. I was so I was looking up the Bugatti, Bentleys the right? other day. <laughs> Stephen, I was looking up Bentleys. Oh my like god! Like a Bentley GT. No, but we're talking like 2008, 2009, 2010 Bentley GTs. You can find them from anywhere from like twenty five to like fifty thousand dollars. They were two hundred plus thousand dollar cars. I don't know what the uptake is on those things, but the Bentley GT is such a gorgeous looking vehicle um i'd be very curious to purchase one of those to park in my garage add it to your collection of zero i have one car <laughs> steven one i know i just like fucking with i'm you. not into cars i'm not into cars uh. at all so anyway they, they came out with a sony car and maybe we can review that in 2026 when it comes out interesting why why so long why 2026 well that's only a couple years away to spin it up nah, I, would, I would just think like oh next year it's coming out I don't know. I if guess they're going to announce they have, it three years beforehand, is what I'm saying. That's not bad. I mean, you got to spin up the production. You got to test. You got to do all that stuff. So maybe we'll see what happens. It's like the, the cyber truck from Tesla. What, whatever happened to that? That's been a few it, years, right? It's supposed to be 2023, maybe. Uh, who knows? They, so Unbreakable so the thing, windows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the weird thing with Tesla, you know, obviously their stock's been getting battered, but it's been overpriced because it's been just... They, they valued it at more than like Toyota, Ford, GM combined, which is kind of hard to see. But then on the flip side, you could kind of say, is it though? Because they've built the infrastructure. They've spent their time building these giga presses and building up these these uh, factories for the future, but they're already out there into the world. Like Ford can't compete because their battery tech sucks. Like they just don't the Mach E just doesn't live up to what it's supposed to live up to. And it will like these BMWs and Lexus and all these other companies, Toyotas, they'll be challenging, but it's not there yet. Like when you go buy a Tesla for, you know, 50, 60,000 and you have a fully functioning vehicle that just fucking goes and you get 300 miles to a charge. I mean, it, it reminds me of the mirrorless wars, you know, you had Sony coming out first like Tesla and then everyone's trying to catch up and eventually they make it there, but it just takes some time. So anyway, that's that uh, Sony's making a car. We'll see what happens there. Interesting. The other announcement. It's going to be the not, Alpha car? No, it's called the Ophelia or something. Oh, Ophelia. Lumineers, anyone? No. Oh, great. There wasn't a lot announced there. We just got, what, Panasonic announced their S5 II and the S5 VIII. To be honest, I haven't really looked. I mean, I haven't heard anything besides the, uh, the Nikon development announcement, the S5 II. Yeah, there's not much. No, and Canon didn't do anything other than I think they did some kind of VR with M. Night Shyamalan, which would have been a good reason for me to go because M. Night lives around the corner. He eats at the same restaurants I eat at. I see him at all his movies are done in Philadelphia, right? Everything's done in the Philadelphia area. Very cool. But yeah, I see him at Morimoto. I see him at Soraya. I see him at R&D. I see him at all these other places I go to because he's all he he goes out to eat in Philly all the time. Did you watch the live stream with Canon and him? No, it was what last was night. It? Was it good? It was just the whole presentation of this new VR goggle set or, or something. I didn't really watch it, but he came out for like two minutes. They probably right. paid him a shit ton of money to come out and talk for two minutes. What? Um, <laughs> and it was so awkward. What is it? What did they come out with? I don't even know. I, I literally tuned in for a minute or two. And once he got off stage, I stopped watching. I didn't even get a press release about that. It looked like some kind of VR goggle set that that uh, Canon is working on. It looked, it looked cool, but I don't know how practical it's going to be. I mean, whatever Canon. happened to the the uh, VR uh, lens that they made for the R5? Oh, Is yeah, anyone really thing. using that? You know, I'm not really sure what they made, but wouldn't it be amazing if it was glasses that could have a teleprompter in them and I can wear those <laughs> in a video? <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't that be something cool? Uh, be like, hey, guys, I know this wasn't your original intention, but can I have a, can I wear them in my videos? And I mean, I wouldn't care. I would, I would wear them and it would look weird, but I'd be like, this is how I can do this from the road. Then I wouldn't need to bring a teleprompter or anything if there was a way to do that. I'm going to look I mean, into at that this. point, just read a script in front of you on, on paper <laughs> if you're going to just cover your eyes up. <laughs> well, we could do that too, where I could have a laptop running the software in front of me. Yeah. I, I mean, at the end of the day, fix a lot of it. A lot of your, you're covered up a lot of the time, right? Yeah. 
So it's not the end of the world if you're just reading a piece of paper or something. I mean, I mean that's, that's how what, we do most of our reviews anyway. I yeah. try and co- The only hard part is when you're looking down, reading the paper, well, I try and cover you up and sometimes I can't. But I write a specific script for fix. Like that's yeah. different. So I have to it's read it. It's a dedicated script instead of just a, an outline of notes. So the other notable announcement was Nikon announcing the development of an 8512 which is what's with nikon and development announcements it's a it's a delaying it's a stalling tactic it's one of these things where it's like we got this coming yeah this is coming it's like well we've known that for three years it's been on the roadmap for three years yeah now now i can tell you that i've i've played with the lens i can tell you that i can't show here look at look at these pictures right now I mean, I'm, I'm happy with what I got out of it. I can't tell you what it smells like. I can't tell you. Uh, I mean, we can <laughs> see from the press release images that it doesn't have an OLED display on it, which I think is the best thing to take out because that was a waste of money and time yep. and effort. It's just stupid. The OLED display never made any sense. See, when, um, you, when you first initially wrote the notes for Raw Talk and said the development announcement of this lens, I didn't think we can actually say that we used it. But yes, uh, we well, have we have used it. <laughs> I, I asked. I mean, I said I would that I would be doing that. I said I told them I would be doing that. Yep, and they're yep. like, OK. But I think the thing that makes them, uh, you know, more OK with me saying it is that in Photo News Fix, I literally said, if you're a Nikon pro shooter and you've been waiting for this lens, you should put some money aside right now and order it as soon as it comes out. This is just one of the it's like with Canon. Canon has an 8512. You buy it. If Sony came out with an 8512, every pro should buy it. If Sony comes out with an 8512, you instantly buy it. There's there's pro lenses and there's a reason you buy them when you're pros. An 8512 is at this juncture a must have. The only people that have ever had 8512s have been Canon with their 8512 EF and you could never get anything in focus at 12. That and their ever. 50 it was always so tough to now focus. Right, but enter the mirrorless world you get this Nikon. There's no reason that when they do officially announce this and make it available that you reserve a copy as soon as possible and just buy it. I don't know what the price is going to be. I don't know when the release date is going to be. This is just a development announcement. But what I can tell you is based on me using it, you're going to want to buy it. There's, there's, if you can only no own one 1.2 lens, to me, the 85 1.2 is the end-all be-all. Like If you can only have one 1.2 lens, I think that is but the But if perfect- I could have more... I would have an 85. I would have a 50. Well, I'd, I'd have, have a 34. I'd have everything for sure. Sorry, 35, one, four. 35, one, two. Jared, Jared sorry. 35, <laughs> no, one, I know two. what you meant. But yeah, if, if you can get all three, that's great. But I think if you had to own just one, I think the 85 is what I would have. And then kind of the, the trinity of 2.8 zoom lenses too. No, F2s. I'm I just saying it become, it's very expensive for a lot of people. But if you're a professional and that's your that's your career, that's what you that's what you get, how you get paid, then yeah, 1.2 all day, buy them all. Well, the other rub with our YouTube channel, Stephen, is the whole professional versus non-professional and then me always talking about professional glass and always talking about professional stuff. But then I come back to, I don't think you should buy shitty variable aperture lenses most of the time. But and you got to keep think- in mind everyone's budget. Everyone's different. You know, can, I got that. Is it good enough to get a 1.8 for some people? No, 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 no. You misunderstand me, Stephen. Uh, what do you mean? I mean... I'm all about 2.8 or better, which is 181412. Sure. I'm talking about variable aperture 35 to 56 or I'm talking about F4s. I'm not a fan of straight up F4s. Now, if you're just traveling and you want like a 24 to 120 Nikon, I don't think they make that on the Z. They used to make that they back in the day. They need to cuz that's a that's great a, lens. It's a great range, mm-hmm. but still there's a difference between an F4 piece of glass and the 28s and then there's a difference between two eights and one eights and the difference between one eights and one fours and one twos. Now you're also talking strictly about still photography. I think when it comes to video, that 24 to 120 F4 is like the end all be all all around jack of all trades types type lens for a, for a video shooter. Yeah. And when it comes to video F4 doesn't matter as much as like two eight and one two and one four one eight whatever. I and think times, I think F4 is plenty. Well and a lot of times when I'm talking about reviews and, and using gear it's always going to be from the still standpoint because that's what i do well and what you do is is you tend to do photojournalism and shoot people you're not shooting landscapes where you're at f8 you know f16 f11 whatever it may be it all depends what you're shooting that's you know all. what i'm tired of hearing steven when, when people i still get these messages from time to time where someone's like 
You know, I shot, I shoot at f eight, I shoot at f eleven, I shoot at f sixteen. What are they I shooting? Shoot, I shoot there. No, it doesn't matter. But everything. Like I was always told that the sweet spot of the lens is around f eight, and I'm like, what is this? Nineteen seventy four. I mean, right? technically, they're not wrong, matter. but... No, but it doesn't matter. I agree. Because F8, if you shoot everything at F8, you're not getting a specific look. When you shoot something at 1.2 and 1.4 one, uh, and 2.2 two and 2.5, you're getting a specific look. The better glass, the 1.2s and the 1.4s and the 2.8s of the world, has a dimension to it. You get this dimensional look. You get better color, better sharpness, yep. better clarity. Thus, why my 28 to 70 F2 sets my images apart from someone else who's just taken regular pictures with a 24 to 72 8 I just I, I think it separates uh, snapshots from professional looking photos I mean you you, do, you get that extra depth like you're saying that three-dimensional type pop from a 1 2 or a 1 4 or f2 lens and, and I noticed this with the when I was shooting the World Series next to the news shooters a lot of them use the 200 to 400 I'm not a fan of the 200 to 400 f4 it's an amazing range Tell, don't get me wrong. That range is incredible. The Nikon 180 to 300 2 8 is even better. Oh yeah, but it's not as long. You want you want the they want the 200 to 400, and then there's rumors of a 200 to 500 from Canon coming with a TC built in. Ooh. But but there's a different look, right? There's a difference between a 400 2 8 and a 400 mil, a 200 to 400 at f4. You're not getting the same look. You don't get the same colors. You don't get the same sharpness. The newspaper shooters don't care because all they're doing is shooting exactly what's happening now and it instantly goes out to the wire they just and they coverage. get it out that's into the it. world yep. that's it mm -hmm. with what i do it's a different style of shooting it's slower i mean not slower in terms of how you shoot but it i take the time to edit i use the certain gear because of the look that it gets and i don't need to turn it around in three seconds yep so not much to say other than that about the ces world uh, I wish Nikon officially would announce this thing so we can make a video about it and share some images. Um, but it is what it is right now. And that's what I got today, Stephen. You got anything else? Did I forget anything from our list here? Uh, no, I think we kind of covered everything. Um, not much to talk about, you know, since we, we were on break for a while. I was on break. Well... If you guys didn't listen to the last couple of episodes because you weren't traveling or the holidays were there. Yes. You, there, there's... One before the end of, well, two weeks before the end of the year. And then the last week of the year, we did a special Q&A, which I actually enjoyed doing. And we got some great questions. We didn't want the, the gear questions. So we just picked other questions that were actual photography related or video related or whatever. And we hit them. And I think it was great to have the audio questions sent in as well. Well, I'm curious. Yeah. Is that something you guys liked? Did you like hearing the actual listeners audio asking the, the question? Did you like uh, the Q&A in general? Should we do you know one every quarter should we do one a month i don't know how, how often should we do something like that i personally really like the q a stuff as long as it's not meant to be just random filler stuff all the time like if, if maybe it's once a quarter sparingly i think it's great yeah i mean maybe if we need and you're to, not answering the same questions over no. and over i don't know maybe if we need to uh fill a, fill a time slot sometime i don't know I mean, that's really the only way we can pre-record a show a week early or even two weeks early, just because, you know, Q&A, you can do whenever. You're not based yeah. on, it's not basing it off of news from CES, which is this past week. You know what I mean? So, you know what I was trying to think of? I was trying to think of how I get to do another show, but with Vanessa Joy Joy. We talked about that last time. We talked about it on the show? Mm-hmm. We did? Yep. And I oh. said you're probably going to talk about the same exact stuff. So it's no, going to be I tough. No, but I told you I didn't want to. So I guess we already I know, did talk I just, about I it. I think it's going to be tough. I mean, I, I'm not opposed to you trying and seeing how it works out, but uh, I think we put out Raw Talk first, then then that show. <laughs> well, yeah, but the thing is trying to expand the network. So if you have two popular shows, then it's more chance to uh, be a sellout. Exactly. And give her 12.5%. Now, 12%, <laughs> less, Matt, more, 18.4%. I get 12%. More than Steven. More than Steven. Which I haven't seen yet, by the way, any money from that. Twelve and a half percent of zero is <laughs> zero because <laughs> we haven't done plugs in this. We're, we're, we're entertaining that 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 option. I remember people um, venmo you, though, right? Yeah, but I think Venmo stopped allowing those through. <laughs> I really do because I hadn't seen any for a while and I think they stopped. Yeah. So anyway, guys, we, we hope you have a happy new year and hope you enjoyed your new year. Hope you enjoy listening to the Raw Talk, which comes out every Friday. Yep. Um, and you can go back and listen to old ones if you haven't. If you missed a Q&A, it's definitely worthwhile to go check out. And that's it, Stephen. You got anything else today? 
No, nothing. Just uh, wishing everyone a happy new year and uh, hope it's a good one for you. Oh, and after now, you cannot say Happy New Year to anybody anymore. Once it passes a certain amount of time. I like, think you have about a week, the first week. Yeah, maybe 10 days if it's the first maybe, time. Yeah, yeah, that's Maybe true, yeah. 10 days. Like if you get to like January 10th and you see someone and it's the first time you've seen them, you could be like, you know what? Happy New Year. But after that, shut up. Like your birthday. I mean, that, that's pushing it at that point. Late January. Yeah. My birthday is not Happy New Year. That's Happy Birthday, Jared, because you get a birthday. <laughs> you get cake. Do you come in? Yeah. Is your wife coming? Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, she had conflicting plans, so we're, we're still kind of talking about it. Well, I need it, to know because there's going to be a chef. Steven. I know. I, that's what I told her. And the other issue is my brother's birthday is that same week, and they were trying to have something that day as well. Uh, so who I'm pays the bills? Figuring Steven, who didn't beat you up as a kid? <laughs> well, no, if we did something, I would probably go to my brother's first in the morning or afternoon and then go to your place after. Yes, because I'm having a uh, an extravaganza, Stephen. Oh, a, I, I saw the invite. It's a 40th birthday plus two and my housewarming all at the same time. The 40th birthday plus two. <laughs> it was pandemic years, man. Uh, my 40s was pan- my 40th birthday was a pandemic year. So there's going to be By the way, a- if you guys ever if you haven't seen that this is 40 video that we did, I think that's one of my favorite edits that we've done for sure. It's a great Check video. Check it out. Yeah. I really like it's it. It's a tearjerker. It's a good one. Yeah, it's a tearjerker. Steven got to watch all my childhood videos from beta tapes. Dude, I was like tearing up just watching them because, you know, I, I hear your mom's voice and everything. And I'm just like, oh, man, this is yeah. uh, this is tough. Yeah, those are there. Those videos exist. And uh, the, the crazy thing is, you know, my mom took all this footage, but it's just like any other family. You take all this footage, you take all these reels or reels, you take all this tape. And you, what do you do if you don't know how to edit? And that's why those AI editors, I guess people can throw shit through an AI editor and it can edit something into some usable tape but but having steven go through that old footage and and actually using it was pretty cool i need to do that for my family one day we have so many old vhs tapes that at this point are probably degrading uh i mean they're 30 plus years old you know 80s tapes so i got to transfer that one day it's just you can you got to do it in real time that's well you can buy a machine that does it digitizes it you can you got to basically sit there and just let it go well, it's really time my, consuming. My buddy Jim, who has that that store, Newtown Camera, yeah. that's one of the things that he does the most of in his store and charges money for and makes good money as people drop off tapes. And he's there, you know, at the, sto- at the well, store exactly. for like you're eight hours. There and you're just letting he, it run in the background. That's fine. Yeah. He lets it run in the background while he does something else. Yeah. So yeah. I, I got to look right. into some kind of platform to, to get that stuff uh, digitized. But what I wouldn't do is mail the stuff. There's this like legacy box. This is not brought to you by legacy box. I wouldn't use it. I would not trust mailing anything. Tony, man, I think I brought that story up one time on here about how I sent out this guy's entire family past from all these reels that he had from back in and the day in the 50s it and it got lost in the mail and I, I, I spent like two weeks trying to find it and I finally found it. I was so, I felt terrible for the guy. He's like, it's not going to get lost, right? I'm like, I, I can't guarantee anything, but we're sending it out into the mail. It's That's out of my why hands. you find local. That's why you find local yep. and you do it locally. Spend and the extra money. of course it got lost, yeah. Yeah, don't do these box things. That's how, I mean, that's not, no, just no. All right, I'm going to go do some lunch, Stephen. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you guys very much for listening. Jared Pull in front of us, photo.com. See ya, bye. Bye.